Hello everyone out there in Facebook land. It's Maria here again with Lunchtime Live here at the Tijuana Estuary. We'll see if anyone is joining us. Uh, I'll give it a minute or so before I do the official start. So we have one person in our audience right now. If you are joining us for Lunchtime Live, and today's program, Bladder Pod and its Bug Buddies, you are in the right place. Uh, we are broadcasting here live at the Tijuana Estuary, the Tijuana River National Estuary and Research Reserve, or Tijuana Estuary for short. I'm standing on the back patio of the Visitor Center. And for those of you who have been here before, you may know where this is. So very close to the building. The Visitor Center is still closed. However, I'm here able to bring these programs to you since uh, uh, we've moved all our programming to online, to live streams and digital uh, virtual school programs. Hi, Mark. Nice to see you. Our, <clears throat> our very dedicated Facebook follower and friend of Lunchtime Live. So happy to see you there. You can see I'm on the back patio today. Hi, Ann. Nice to see you. Uh, good, you used the link, it brought you there. Excellent, I love this feedback. Hey, Ann, how's the audio? How's the audio, guys? Am I sounding all right? I hope you can hear me clear. I hope the wind isn't too bad. I am doing the thing I probably shouldn't do, which is standing towards the wind, but I am gonna turn around in just a minute. It is windy, and I'm grateful for the wind again because it is, thank you, Frank. I appreciate that uh, feedback there since audio is really important. Audio is like 60% of your video. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, so it is, a, it is a beautiful day here. Um, with this cooler wind, it is nice on the coast. I know it is, we're in that heat wave that just doesn't seem to want to let go. Um, but the coast has been a kind of nice, uh, humid, but um, uh, lots of marine layer and uh, burning off late and then coming back in and uh, a nice breeze. So with that, again, the visitor center is still closed. Uh, trails are open, parking lot and restrooms are open, and I'm here. Uh, happy to deliver these lunchtime lives with you. And today I'm really excited about the plant and animal uh, I want to highlight today. So if you have heard of bladder pod, you can give me a thumbs up. If you are like, what kind of name is that? Well, we're going to show you in just a minute. Uh, uh, bladder pod. Who's heard of bladder pod? I, see a, I saw one thumb go up. Maybe you've seen bladder pod because it is a relatively common plant in uh, Southern California and uh, Baja uh, in kind of drier areas. Um, actually, this plant is, um, oh, I like that one, Frank. You never heard of it, huh? <laughs> it's a funny name, too. So, so you can find that bladder pod is found in, from coastal bluffs to desert areas. Um, it is uh, a, a plant that can be grown fairly easily in your yard, and um, it, uh, uh, it, it, it's fairly common, although around here, yes, yeah, sounds like a rattlesnake. We're going to we're gonna listen to some bladder pod today. We're going to look at some bladder pod, and uh, we'll see who likes to buddy up to the bladder pod. So bladder pod, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I'm standing next to, a species. Sorry, my mask is like falling down today. Uh, I'm standing next to an individual bladder pod. We don't have a lot of them around here, but some places you go, you can see quite a bit of them. I mean, they are very, very common and, and easy to grow. We just, for some reason, don't have as many. And uh, we, but we have this one that's been here on the back patio for for years, for years, and uh, it's right next to me there. And of course, I'm gonna, I will be taking the the camera off the tripod and sharing the bladder pod with you up close and personal using that macro lens. You can see it's blowing there in the wind, but you might see some yellow flowers behind me there. 
and this kind of branchy um, design. Oh, lots on the South Trail. Okay, Ann. Huh. I have to. I'll have to check it out next time I go on one of my my wellness walks. All right. So let's get down uh, or get you guys down off of here to look at bladder pod. And if you have bladder pod in your yard, and by the way, if you're just tuning in, uh, welcome to the program, Lunchtime Live. If you're tuning in later, we do these weekly. And we also love for you to share, for those of you native plant enthusiasts, uh, would like to share anything that you have at home with a photo during the program or afterwards. We love that in the comment section. So there is a fairly healthy, a little bit scraggly, because it does get trimmed, bladder pod. Peritoma arborea. And I had to check that out. I, I was always under the impression that the, I didn't realize there was a name change. It was Isomerus arborea, but it is Peritoma arborea, for those of you um, scientific names, I like scientific names, in the Cleomaceae family. In the Cleomaceae family. So bladder pod, bladder pod is its common name. And this is, again, this is a shrub, a perennial shrub, evergreen perennial shrub that gets, like a lot of our perennial shrubs in the coastal saint scrub, we've got that, you know, three to six feet high, you get as wide as five or six feet, looking at this individual here. Not a dense shrub, because you can see uh, through this one. Um, as the stems grow quite long, it branches, very branchy um, uh, species here. So bladder pod, we're going to get up close here again. We'll start with the, we'll start with the leaves here. The leaves of the bladder pod. And you can see, tell me what you see here. How many leaves do you see? And, you, and the lighting, the lighting, I'm sorry, I apologize for the lighting since we are in the shade. This might be tough and the wind is blowing. But you can see that the, that the branches are covered with leaves coming off the branch there with their own stems. And what we call these, as you might think of them as an individual, as an individual leaves, these are, these are more like leaflets, leaflets. So there are three leaflets per leaf. There we go. How's that? Okay, so these are leaflets. You'll see there about mm, a few centimeters couple centimeters long in length, a smooth, or what we call entire margin. And I will bring out the macro lens in just a minute. I want to just hold this up there so you could see. Very smooth, gray green in color, not sticky. Oh, lighting looks great, thank you. Not sticky, smooth, almost leathery. Almost leathery. Le leaflet. Leaflets. So three leaves, three, three leaflets in a cluster there. So a lot of those leaves are at the at the top ends of the branches, at the far end of the branches. Okay? And as I rub these leaflets, <laughs> and it's tough for you to, to, to see this, and even for me, because I'm wearing a mask, but there is a pungent odor that comes from this plant. Not something I'm, I, that, that's pleasant to my uh, palate of scent smells, but I guess some people don't, ha don't think it's quite so strong or so um, um, uh, unpleasant as I do, but... It is an unpleasant smell to me, um, but quite pungent. And depending on the time of year, I think uh, it can smell. It has it has a stronger smell than other times of year. Um, but what we what, what's really wonderful about the bladder pod right now is that it's still flowering. It's still flowering. 
and the flowers, again, in clusters at the ends of these long branches. See that there? What color are those flowers? Yellow. Yes, yellow. And you see these flowers are kind of, hmm, what shape that is. Kind of, uh, not tubular, they're wider than, than a tube, but they're, you know, they, they're sort of trumpet-like, flared there. And then look at those stamens, those beautiful stamens kind of whiskery coming out of the flowers, the yellow flowers. So this plant, the bladder pod, still flowering here in late August. Now, if you look this up, it'll say it flowers November to June. But you also might read that it flowers all year long, uh, which is wonderful. So if you're looking for a plant in your for your yard and, and to support wildlife and and to uh, that thrives in the water, the water cycle of the rainfall of Southern California, bladder pot is a nice one that will stay fairly green and flowering. All right, so let's put on that macro lens and get a little closer to a little closer look at those the leaf, the leaflets and the flowers of the bladder pod. All right, I just love this macro lens. There we go. You can see that, maybe you can see that smooth texture through these virtual airwaves and that green stem, fresh new, newer stem from this year as the stems get older, you'll see they get more woody. There we go, woody and kind of paler in color, beige, more of a beige, a woody texture. But these newer stems with the newer leaves and the newest flowers here at the ends. And you can see that it looks like there's even some more flowers about to bloom. It's still going. Could be that this plant is all in the shade and, and, and maybe there's a, the coastal fog provides more moisture for this plant, this in particular individual, to thrive like this. You may be, you may have some bladder pod you've seen somewhere else that might not look quite this fresh. Um, uh, but they are, they are a perennial plant uh, with, with some dormancy in the drier months. Okay. Bladder pod. Now we've, we've looked at the, the leaves. We've seen those flowers. And by the way, those flowers support uh, hummingbirds and butterflies. Um, again, like I mentioned last week, I'm not a butterfly expert. I, I didn't take any classes in entomology, uh, but I um, have read that there are some butterflies that we call uh, whites, like the northern, I think the northern white and the, and the checkered white. The northern white and the checkered white, these are um, butterflies that like bladder pod and the western white sorry it's western not northern western white becker's white checkered white butterflies and bees as well right um now how does it get its name bladder pod maybe as we've been moving around the plant you noticed something kind of odd shaped Kind of like a hanging punching bag <laughs> or um, is the bladder coming out of the flower that's a, a great question and from there what do we see 
That is such a great question, Mark. Great observation. Maybe you, maybe you know something already about these plants. But we can see there, see that this, this, this portion of the plant is part of the plant, which we're calling a bladder, sort of reminds us maybe of that shape, uh, which is the reason this plant has that name, is coming out of an old flower. So what, what would these kind of bladder shaped or kind of a, a punching bag shaped pod, what purpose does it serve? What part of the plant is this? Oh my goodness, the wind is really, really kicking up today. Let's see. Let's p what purpose would this serve? And you can see that this, this, this pod, green, leathery, smooth. What's inside? What's the purpose of this part of the plant? I'm waiting to see if anyone knows. There may be a delay in response. One thing about, about these virtual programs is that there sometimes is a delay. It is the fruit. It is the fruit of the plant holding the seeds. So a seed pod. These are seed pods. The seed pods that dangle from the, these branching stems of the bladder pod. Can you see all of those there? You can see these hanging, hanging below. So seeds and flowers occur at the same time. The older flowers have gone to seed, producing these, these uh, seed pods, these hanging seed pods, and newer flowers are, um, are being produced at the same time. <laughs> wind, wind, go away, yes. Although the wind feels really good, it makes it tough to vid for video. So yes, yeah, someone mentioned they dry up. So I, I did a little uh, digging below earlier before the program started, and I found, Paul, I did find a seed pod that had been detached. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Let me put it up to my microphone. Did you hear that? The seed pods. I got my microphone. So that's what the seed pod looks like once it dries up. There's the seed pod and drops to the ground to release the seeds. To release the seeds. And although I didn't, I didn't get a chance to research this, there, there must be a, some birds uh, that come by and, and eat these seeds and, and spread these seeds that way. It does sound like a musical instrument. Or as uh, I think John mentioned earlier, rattlesnake in blowing in the wind. Very cool. So let's do the, we'll put the macro lens back on for the, a little closer look at the seed pod. All right, let's see. Let's put that macro lens back on. Let's find a seed pod. There we go. So you can see, you can see that texture, that leathery texture of the, fresh seed pod. There we go. Of the bladder pod. So you don't see that you don't see this seed pod that often. Um, maybe you know loco weed. Loco weed is, is, is similar. Um, and they're the ones that definitely sound like more like a rattlesnake. They're seed pods. They're the the the, the, the pod 
skin is not quite so thick in, in the loco weed. You can really hear them rattling when the wind blows. So right now, while they're green, like this, we don't hear that. It's not until they dry up that they start to make that rattle. All right. Like I mentioned, these are, these are plants that are found in the coastal sage scrub, but also, you know, in desert areas in uh, uh, primarily Southern California, but, um, and Baja, but uh, it is a California native. Now, I mentioned that it supports, that those flowers support, uh, you know, are some of those pollinators. There's, um, you know, bees and butterflies and hummingbirds, but for, is there, there a mechanism? Sorry, I'm reading a question here. So it does seem counterproductive. The pods keep the seeds um, inside as they mature, and then there is a mechanism, and I'm, I, apologize, I don't know, I didn't look this up, but birds uh, maybe pick the seeds off the ground. Um, <clears throat> some other seed-eating animals that will then um, eat the seeds, or I guess maybe if the wind blows, um, you would uh, the the blow, it could blow some of those seeds uh, away. As we can see, there's quite a bit of, of wind here. But those are some big seeds, so um, <clears throat> almost like pea size in there. Okay, so now. I did mention that we may see, what well, I wanted to talk to you about a, a, an, an, a, an animal species, uh, not the pollinators that we've been talking about on the bladder pod, but something else. Something else that uh, is very specific to bladder pod. Right? And this is an insect, a bug. And some of you may know this already. Those of you who like California natives and know something about California natives, you would know, might know that there is a, an insect that kind of lives with the bladder pod. And I'm kind of looking around here because I did see one. Um, and I want to see if I can find it again. I do have pictures, of course, because I wasn't sure we would actually see one. And, uh, oh, I do, I see one. Okay, I'm going to keep my eye on it as I talk about this insect. So we, a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about the spittle bugs, we talked about, we talked about spittle bugs and, and what it means to be a bug. This is another bug, another, um, another uh, insect that is in the Hemiptera order, uh, which are the true bugs. And I'm going to show you a photo of the harlequin bug. This is the harlequin bug. Okay. The harlequin bugs, you see this is a, a photo of a harlequin bug on a bladder pod. And they are a very striking design, right? See that black and orange and red and, and even white, okay? You see there's that, that, there's an X design on the back. That's where the wings kind of fold together. So this is, a, this is a bug that can fly. However, uh, it doesn't do that as much. Um, <clears throat> And like a bug, it uh, has those mouth parts designed for sucking. So it is feeding on this bladder pod, okay? Um, not chewing the leaves, but uh, ingesting all that fluid, all that um, sap from inside of the plant. Not all of it, but that's what it's ingesting. Um, and it is, it is, uh, <clears throat> and in doing so, remember I was talking about that pungent smell? These uh, harlequin bugs also take in some of that flavor, right? So they aren't 
real appetizing to a insect eating predator. Um, also those colors kind of give a warning um, as well. Uh, but uh, they're not, they're not uh, poisonous. They um, probably just don't have a very pleasant taste because of the sap that they're sucking from this kind of pungent, unpleasant bladder pod. All right, now I'm gonna show you another. So, so these harlequin bugs living, live on the, on, the, on the bladder pod, and the females, of course, they, they lay their eggs. So I have another photo for you. Um, I did look around to see if I saw any eggs. Now this is really cool because I did not know what the eggs look like. So, of course, I have a photo here of a female harlequin bug laying about a dozen eggs. They lay about a dozen eggs on the black pod, on the leaves here. This one looks like it's laying it right on the, on the pod. Maybe not a smart idea, but also I saw photos on leaves. And look at those eggs. They're so cute. They look like little... And I'll turn this photo sideways so we can see that. They look like, like little cups or little barrels or little kegs. Adorable. I had no idea until I was doing the research for this that the harlequin bug eggs were so cute. And harlequin bugs, there are basically three stages, those eggs. Then there's the nymphs, uh, which are in about five um uh, five uh, instars, so they'll, they'll, they'll evolve, molt about five times, and then the adult. So it lays about hmm, 12 eggs that take about six to, six to 12 days to hatch, okay? And then the instars, or the, the nymphs, are, <laughs> when they hatch, they are the same colors. Um, not quite the same patterns yet, but the, these bright colors of orange and red as the adult. And they're perfectly round, and they're so cute. I did not print a picture of those. I, I really do encourage you to look these up. They're just adorable, absolutely adorable. And they cluster together, apparently, um, <clears throat> as they continue to develop throughout their, um, through the different stages. And as the, as, at the, each stage, the markings change. And the colors change a little bit until they become um, an, an adult. And uh, then um, <clears throat> and then the adult can live its whole life on the same bladder pod. If that bladder pod, you know, is a healthy individual and, you know, has, has sap and doesn't, I guess, dry up too much, they can do all, their whole life cycle, which is about, I read, about 70 to 90 days. So from eggs to adults... Um, you know, the end of the adult's lifespan, about 70 to 90 days of this. Now, I see a bladder pod. Now, I mean, sorry, I see a harlequin bug. And a lot of times, depending, on, I guess, on the time of the year or when there's been a hatching, there's been times when we've seen lots of them at one time. Um, I struggled to find one today. Um, and maybe because it's windy, uh, maybe when, earlier when I looked, it wasn't. Uh, warm yet, so maybe they were they were kind of, you know, height, you know, tuck, hunkered somewhere. So let me see if I can get this one. Sorry, I had to put my paper down there. I want it to blow away. I've also got a spider web right here. I'm trying not to disturb. And let me see. Can you see that? Now I I don't want to start all this. And this uh, small, or this is a small one. So the, so the adults, they get about, you know, nine, ten millimeters long. This one, a little smaller. And I, I, and I, I can't really put the macro on there. Um, because they don't really fly, I mean, they, they have wings and they can fly, but um, typically when they feel like they're being, you know, about to be um, eaten or taken, they just drop. So I don't, I don't want it to do that. Let me see if I can, if I can steady this branch and show you. Can you see that one there? 
Oh, the wind today. There it is. One of the Harlequin bugs on the bladder pod. And I am, um, oops, there we go. Can we see that? Can you see that? We don't want to harass it too much. All right, can't, oops. Where'd it go? There he is. There it is. And it's tough with this wind and the lighting to see the, this could be one of the, the stages, one of the instars. They have five of them until they're adults. So maybe this one is not quite an adult yet. He looks big. Uh, I don't want to put my finger too close for scale, but it's probably about five or six millimeters or so. They get bigger. They do get bigger. All right, there, we will we'll let that one then go. So these, these Harlequin bugs, which maybe I can get on the other side And, oh, it's moving around. So these hologram bugs, they've actually, they're found um, across a lot of the southern U.S. Uh, from coast to coast, uh, having come up from Mexico, I think sometime after, right after the Civil War, Let's see that, right after the Civil War, and, um, you know anything about them they're a real agriculture pest sometimes they are called cabbage cabbage bugs they're also, also called stink bugs um, but on cabbage cabbage plants uh, this one of those cruciferous plants they do a lot of damage they'll do a lot of damage because you remember those they're they're a bug and they have those those mouth parts that will just drain the plant a lot of, of, from a lot of its, of its sap. I mean, that plant will dry up. For some reason, though, with bladder pod, this doesn't occur. So it's almost, it's found a plant that kind of gives it some protection um, and, and therefore doesn't hurt this plant. It's, I think it's still a little mystery why it doesn't deplete the bladder pod of its sap. Excuse me. Let's see. There, oh, there he is. There it is. So we're really following this guy. Um, I don't want to grab it. I don't, I don't want to touch it and grab it drop. Um, but there the harlequin, the beautiful harlequin bug, a true bug in the Hemiptera family, on the California native, Baja native bladder pod. Yes, Omar, he's moving. He's on the move. He's like, get away from me. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. All right, well, let's go. Oops, that was a fun one today. Um, I did not, I, I looked earlier, I looked yesterday looking for those, those Harlequin bugs. They just weren't on there. Uh, but right 10 minutes before I came out there, I mean, before I started the broadcast, I found that little one and then I lost it and then, um, uh, but then it made its appearance. So that was really wonderful. Uh, really happy to show that to you. Keep, keep your eye out for Harlequin bugs. Um, and bladder pod uh, on your local, uh, you know, hikes and walks in your natural spaces, your local natural spaces where a lot of um, coastal sage scrub is abundant. So I, if, uh, if you have any of these, if you, if you have, find these in your, in your, um, in your uh, local adventures, please 
uh, feel free to share them with us. Yes, hi Dick, yes. The astragalus, the local weed, or milk vetch, I guess, I didn't know it was called that, has those sim similar pods and they rattle. I was, I wanted to do a lunchtime live about on those. They're really abundant down at, um, off the 5th and Irish Trail near what we call the Brackish Ponds, right under the direct helicopter path. And um, it just didn't seem logistically possible, so I didn't do that. Um, we don't have much around here at the visitor center. Actually, I think I just know of one. But yes, very similar pods that rattle when they're dry, sound like rattlesnakes. They, they don't get quite as tall as the bladder pod, uh, but very uh, also easy to grow. So if you like that rattle sound, you want a, a musical yard, uh, look for plants with pods like that, and, and, and that you can have your own uh, you know, uh, rhythm section in your backyard. <laughs> so uh, it's been wonderful sharing this with you today. Uh, nice surprise with the Harlequin bug showing its showing itself. Um, and uh, I hope you had a, I hope you enjoyed this as well. I do have an announcement next week. We will be taking the week off uh, from Lunchtime Live, and but the following week, the Tuesday after Labor Day. Uh, we, I'm, I'm hoping to do something a little bit special, um, something that's more interactive. Thank you, something that answers questions that you have. Uh, so please look uh, in our for a Facebook post that describes what Lunchtime Live will be um, in two weeks, uh, where your input is really appreciated. Uh, I'd like to just talk about the estuary in general. Hi, Ron. Nice to see you there. Nice to see your name there. You're very welcome. And uh, so, so look for that. I'm going to call it, I think I'm going to call it Roof with a View. So I'd like to broadcast from the roof. I'd like to talk about the, the estuary, uh, at the reserve, in some very general terms, answering questions that you might have about the history of the reserve or fa those fun facts about the reserve. Uh, not diving into species, not diving into sewage topics, um, or anything to politi or anything political. Just uh, you know, those kind of fun facts about the estuary. Maybe some of those questions that you always wanted to know. So we will, um, and, and and I would like to broadcast that from the roof, so we get a view. So that's I'm really looking forward to that. I hope it works out. I'm going to work on that. And what I'd really like is for you to either uh, email me if you if you know me. You can email me some questions, or I'll make it make a way for you to do that on um, uh, on Facebook to get those questions to me ahead of time, so I can answer them during the broadcast. Okay. Um, so any other questions, just shoot them in the comments. I'll try to get back to them. Uh, I'll get back to them this afternoon, and I will see you in two weeks. Stay cool, stay safe, and uh, love seeing you on. Um, uh, uh, out there in, in Facebook land. So have a great day, everyone. We'll see you in a couple weeks. You're very welcome, and thank you guys for being here. Thanks so much.